Thank you very much, Henry. Um, I have the, the great honor and distinction of sitting at round a table <laughs> on perilously high chairs with Henry Wolfe and that, Harry that's Burton. That's me, that's me, and that's Harry. Harry Burton and Henry Wolfe have collectively nearly a century of experience both knowing and working with and on Harold Pinter. Would you mind speaking up? I'm the longer end of the century. <laughs> And uh, Harry has uh, produced a film called Working with Pinter, which we're screening at ACT Theatre in the Bullet Cabaret this evening. And a jolly good film it is, too. A jolly good film it is. It's a very good film. One of the very few that sort of bridges the gap. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay. No, it's one of the I very few. That. You see, what I don't realise, being just a living fossil, is that a lot of these... Isn't young... that a tautology? I thought it was a dinosaur. Do you mind if I finish my sentence? Or are you a married man? Sorry. But the... Most of the young people who come to the theatre have no idea about Pinterland and what it constitutes. And they think that you can approach, one can approach, particularly the actors, acting Pinter like any other playwright. And in certain basic ways you can. That's true. You have to be truthful, this and the other. But it's no good just adopting straightforward, standard, stand the man methods with Pinter any more than it is any good with um, Oscar Wilde. You can't adopt a slow, discovered approach to, you know, an Oscar Wilde line like, to love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. If you start a, a, a text I've always followed, but if you start searching for the truth, a la Brando, take all night. And the same is true, you know, is much abused in that way, is the British playwright Joe Orton, a marvellous playwright, but he's kind of rough trade Oscar Wilde. And he has to be stylized and lifted off the page mm. to be truthful at all. And to make Pinter truthful, you've got to realize it isn't just any old play. It has to be in a, it's, most of his plays are poems anyway, his best poems in my opinion, apart from a few which are brilliant, but his best poems are his plays, I think. And I just think that actors don't seem to realize that his, to make those lines come off the page, you need a kind of stylized approach in a way. And where Harry's marvellous film succeeds so well is approaching that whole issue of acting Pinter. Not like every actor, every playwright needs a different approach. And Harry's film is one of the only thing, pieces I know that illustrate that. Now, now you figure quite heavily in Harry's film, as does Harry, but also uh, Harold Pinter himself is the central figure in it. In a, in a workshop setting, which Harry enlightened me, he had never actually engaged in before. That's true. He, he'd, um, he, he'd had cancer and recovered from uh, major surgery, but felt he didn't have the energy to direct full productions anymore. He was, a, of course, you know, a frontline uh, director at the National Theatre in the West End, but he felt that part of his life was over. And I heard him say that, but I was you know, spending quite a lot of time in the summers with him on the cricket field, or around the cricket field with the cricket club that we both belong to, and, and felt he still had a tremendous amount of energy and a lot to offer. Which was why I took my life in my hands and said, would you, if you don't want to direct plays anymore, what about working <coughs> with, with some actors in a workshop? And you know what he said. What did he say? He said, what's a workshop? <laughs> because nobody had ever bloody asked him in 50 years. Yes. It was simply my good fortune to be the one to explain to him the difference between production and workshop. And a workshop was where you focused on process. And you didn't have a, a, you know, an end point of delivery of you know, as close to perfection as you could get. You simply made glorious mistakes and um, carried on working. And he was so fascinated, you can imagine, you knew Harold better than anybody, how fascinated he would be by the idea of a process in which people were simply on that road of discovery rather than trying to get to the point where they could do it. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to get to the point where you could do it, you could just play. Yeah. And he loved that idea. So we, we did a workshop and at the end of it I felt that I'd missed the trick. I should have had cameras there. Mm -hmm. If there'd been cameras at the workshop we did, it would have captured something. And that was when I realised I had to take my life in my hands and ask him again and then find some cameras to put in the room. And he, he said yes amazingly said yes yeah. to the cameras and then I had to go and... So the idea of the out. film didn't occur to you until after the after first workshop? After the first workshop, when he was the last to leave the bar, he was so delirious, he chatted up all the girls, he gave fantastic notes to the guys, 
he loved the whole thing. And I suddenly thought, damn, you know, if we'd had two or three cameras in that room, you'd have, you'd have something archival that, that you could hand down the generation, something for real value or for further generations. I mean, that may be a bit grandiose, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And conventional perception has Pinter as being a rather formidable, even forbidding mm. figure. It's, it's but in the film, what impresses me is his, his charm, his delight in what he's... Mm. Mm. You know, in his works, and other actors for that mm. matter. Well, I think that's the crucial part, is how, how excited he was to see people taking the opportunities he'd given yes. them. But, but when that happened, he, he had the miraculous power to let go of the plays and let them be discovered anew. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a proprietorial yes. aspect to him once, once, the, the, once the process of people discovering the plays had begun. He was discovering them himself, and that was beautiful. It, that's one of the nicest things about him. When you put your finger on it, Frank, when you say that so many people were intimidated by him, and he could be an intimidating figure, huge head, deep voice, very, very easily offended, not the least aggressive person I've ever met. <laughs> but what people didn't realise is, and it's true, that he was an innocent when it came to seeing his work. Mm -hmm. He was so delighted and surprised yeah. by people's production. <clears throat> That's, by the way, why he was so easily conned mm -hmm. by a lot of really bad directors <laughs> who did terrible productions, but he was so surprised by what he had intuitively created. Mm -hmm. So he was open to suggestion, and as Harry, you know, illustrated in this whole workshop situation, he was totally delighted by young people mm -hmm. and was a positive influence, yes. and I loved that about him. And uh, he was never, I think <coughs> in 60 years, I think we had two fourings out, and I don't want the five quid back. <laughs> <laughs> but why do you think, wh where do you think that innocence came from in, in his nature and his character? It's such an amazing thing for, for someone to be able to be so generous with their work, to, to a fault in a, in a way, from what you just yes. said, that he could actually give the place to the wrong people and let them do things you know, that weren't necessarily, in our humble opinions, to the, to the mm. benefit of the place. But where did that innocence come from? But on the same, by the same token, he could go absolutely crazy yes. if someone left out a word yeah. or a comma. He was amazingly specific. Yeah. I'm not suggesting for a moment that he was easy about what he'd written. Far from it. He wanted the, what he'd written. But with, with I, good cause, because in, in our experience of, 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 of giving readings of his plays, if something is left out, if something is added to, more shockingly, mm -hmm. if that, that particular pause is not observed, if those ellipses are ignored, it doesn't quite sound right. That's there, actually there true. There is the score to play, and you know, if you play the notes, the play is presented. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that's not enough. No. You know what I mean? Yes. You went yeah. in there where you mm -hmm. get I forget the playwright you mentioned, it certainly wasn't David Mamet, when you say to him that, that when he directs a film, mm. the actors become lumps of wood yes. following his I, direction. I, I did indeed say that. Yes, but it was somebody who looked remarkably like you. And the thing was that dear old Harold hated additions. I remember once doing monologue in New York and a very good young director, Gary Jones, directed. And this is a, actually a piece that was written for you specifically? Well, you see, he was too British to say that, but he, he did let me do it in 1973 on television when, in 1973, anybody would have loved to do it. He was such a loyal fellow that he threw the script across to his secretary and said, this is for Henry. He would never say that to me, <laughs> but he nevertheless asked me to do it. And so jolly nice of him, really. He was always generous.